Can you move closer to light? 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 Be in the light. Let's go to the light. Go to the light. Go to the light. No, no, no. From the light, Hollywood. <laughs> so, um, so I welcome you here, and uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, for me, it's an honor and pleasure to introduce uh, Spready Anana. I met Spready, I think it was like five, six years ago, in Damanhur when I was visiting and I was exploring the possibility of bringing a group of students from CIS to Damanhur, and the host me in uh, the most amazing, kind, generous ways. Uh, I left really happy, and I felt there was something going on in that community that I haven't felt in many others that have visited. So something very successful, something something so that she is going to elaborate, I'm sure, here. You know. And then the few years ago also we coincided in Moscow in a conference where also Anna was there. So and this is the third time that we see each other. So it's great to have you here in our home, hospital home here at CIS. And um, I think most of you already know who is Peridian uh, Ananas is. Ananas? Uh, <laughs> yes, we've heard bio as an introduction, uh, has degrees in English and Spanish literature and a master in media ecology. Uh, she's trained in conflict resolution and community building. She has worked for the European Parliament and as a consultant for Italian and international organizations. She became a full-time citizen of Damanhur in 1993. You're in the diplomat, one of the major diplomats of Damanhur. That's not in your bio, but she's one of the major diplomats of Damanhur. And what the trials around the world and let's mm -hmm. know what to the people what Damakhur is about. And it's also a member of the this is for the more esoterically inclined in the audience, a member of the Way of the Oracle. I don't know how much you will speak about that. It's very interesting practice that is there. And I was also a research group specializing in communication with intelligent shuttle energies. Okay. I would like to hear more about that too. And she's the author of the Temples of Humankind and Traveler's mm -hmm. Guide to Damakhur, as well as Another thing I like about Tama Spread is a comic book novelist. I love comic <laughs> books myself. So, uh, that was she's the most fun thing I ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all of you, uh, Spread and Anas, help me to. Uh, Thank you. Is the light good enough? Do you want darkness? Th or this is fine, and then maybe we put darkness uh, when we look at the slides. But as I live in community, I have a little bit of community here with me. So I would like to introduce you to two more people that are really important and they are here with me today. Well, first one, I, we have uh, Kualia. Hello. She is also a Damanurian. She's been living in Daman for how many years now? Kualia? Four years. For years, so I've been living there for 20. She's been there before, so you have different generations. And she is our first American citizen. Mm -hmm. So she's been really pioneering, bridging the cultures that are not always meeting uh, easily, right? <laughs> Guaglia has been learning Italian very fast, and now she's very active in uh, promoting Damar, helping people that come from America when they come there, understand and really create a bridge. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say, Paula? Um, well, it's really quite an honor to be in this position because uh, I do a lot of translation work between Italian and English, although I feel it's not only about the language, it's also about the, the emotions. Mm -hmm. Damar her is is, uh, I once heard it described as as an emotion. I feel that it's um, it's really the heart of the the people and the temples and things you'll hear about from Esperide that really make it such a special place. And this is the reason that I, I chose to live there. I lived in the San Francisco area and went to university in Berkeley. So I've lived here for about nine years. So in some ways, it's always like a homecoming to to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kualia will be here, so after if you have questions for me or for her, she will be there. She will send some books and, and things from Davenor, so you are welcome to ask questions to both of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to introduce you to Wendy Grace, and she's been really holding the light and the, the, the roads open for me and for Davenor for many, many years uh, with California. So I want to say thank you, Wendy. And if you, we have, um, with Wendy, created a beautiful space in her, her home in Santa Cruz where we have a lot of Damanurian art, which is very special because it's uh, energetically active art, which we believe creates a very special portal with the 
energies they are now important for the awakening of humanity. And so Wendy has been holding this sacred place, hosting uh, events and conferences, and uh, thank you very much Wendy for that. So then uh, if you're interested, we could keep you informed of the events that happen because they're quite close to you, closer than Dharma, and they can be an interesting step uh, in getting to know what we're doing also through the feeling of the energies that we're working with and then hopefully that will make you feel like coming and visit us in Italy. And you're doing a seminar this weekend. Yes, and this weekend we're having a seminar that will be dedicated to exploring the Damanria philosophy more in depth and the use of this um, selfie guy. We'll speak more about these technologies for meditation and really opening to what are the new possibilities for humanity and how can each one of us contribute to this. Yes. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so, I would like to start maybe going briefly through these slides so that give you an idea of what we're doing, who we are. You will see pictures of many people in many places. Yes, thank you. And then, um, and we'll do this rather quickly. I will not speak for hours and hours. And after that, we can um, have, I can have your questions and we can have a little conversation if you want. Is there any chance that all took some water? Uh, I think some water. Thank you, sir. Thanks. It's really hot in here. Thank you. Perfect. So. Are you feeling good already? Do you want to hold it? I think she's good. What? She's good? I'm good. How do you think? So, this is just the introduction that really encapsulates what Dharma is about it's community, spirituality research and action. And um, I really like this idea of Dhamma being a laboratory for the future. And this was uh, said by Irving Laszlo, I'm sure you're familiar with who he is. And this is really interesting because Dhamma is large enough to be a laboratory where the things that we do can be experimented with enough people. We're not just 10, 20 people. We are hundreds of people, we're 700 people 38 year, years of history. So it's a laboratory where you can see social dynamics, uh, not just on a small scale, and yet it's not so large that you don't see the effects. And it's also a, a size that makes it possible for us to bring change quite quickly. So we can see when things are working, we can see when things are not working so well, and we can bring um, change in our society by seeing quickly what the results are. And for us, the idea of change is a fundamental element. And we say that it's very important to change when things are going really well. <laughs> very often, most often, as uh, humans, we're you know, creatures of habit. When things are going well, we say, hey, it's great. Let's hold on to this. This is fantastic. When we say when things are going really well, that's when we have the energy to really start envisioning, dreaming the next level. And that when you have the energy to get there. Sure, we can change and respond also to crisis, and we can do that. But if we can think of change and dream of change when things are going well and we have energy, then for sure it's a leap in evolution that we can take. Thank you. That's where we are. So it's northern Italy. We are very close to the border with France, and it's a mountain valley. So we're not at all in a city context. And this, of course, has played an important part in the history and how we developed. Very different to develop in a city than it is to develop in a valley. In a sense, the fact that it was a mountain valley and also not inhabited very much created an ideal greenhouse for the first years uh, of Damaru to really grow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have been um, really active on the land, on the territory, wondering how can we create something that could be also of use for the whole of humanity, a model that could be duplicated. And so this was um, an award that we were given by a UN Nations that made us very happy because what basically says is that we are a global human settlement community and what we are creating can be reproduced and can be of use also for others. That's the valley. Mm -hmm. Um, if you can go back, mm -hmm. uh, oops. okay. If you can, go, you see the, that mountain. Do you see? Can you see that it looks like a sleeping lady? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is called the Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It was called like this way before we went there. And there is an ancient legend, a Celtic legend, because this valley was inhabited by the Celts, that says that she was a goddess that went to sleep in the past because times were changed and it was not the time for the goddess to be awakened anymore. But she was there waiting mm -hmm. for a new kind of humanity to be born and a new um, relationship with the divine so that the goddess could come alive again. Mm -hmm. And so that's our valley. Mm -hmm. More views, just uh, to really give you a green context for our... <laughs> <laughs> when you come to Davoner, that's what you find. There is, in a sense, federation of communities. These were just some... People, we have a strange effect with, between the computer and the projector, so you're not seeing the slides in their normal format, they're all a little squeezed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these people look taller than they are. <laughs> but, but what I wanted to underline here is that it says federation of communities, because we have been very aware of the importance of critical numbers. So humans work well when we are in groups, they go, to a maximum of 200 to 120 people, which is what nature peoples normally are. When you reach that number, then it's important to create a structure where there are different cells, but not everything is centralized anymore. So this is why Dhamma is a federation of communities. Being 700 people, we have a federation whereby we have common directions, but communities that have a lot of autonomy on the land and in decision making. So then we'll see this more in depth. This is our flag, we want it to be yellow like the sun. Um, the signs, uh, the two double square, the two squares represent the meeting of the spiritual and the material plane and the sign of infinity to remind us that we are part of a cosmic family which is larger than just us here now. We have a constitution, very important, our fundamental charter. We've changed it a few times over the years from the beginning. Our dream is not to need it anymore because our principles will be so ingrained in us that we breathe them, we don't need to read them. So we've been reducing the number of articles as time went by. At the moment we have 21 articles in the Constitution. Mm. This is a photograph where you can see um, the central part of Damaner, this land that you're seeing here, is really like a garden and we dedicate it to the relationship with nature. So there are many uh, flowers and structure that really create a special feel when you arrive there. Here you see, the, the, again, this is called the open temple, and you see a fountain dedicated to the element water. Art for us has always been the fundamental tool for spiritual growth. So there is a lot of artistic uh, work everywhere. This is a very old one. You see it's a standing stone with a snake, so a symbol of the energies because when the founders found this place, they were looking for a place that would be very special from the energetic point of view. They had been traveling all around the world, uh, following um, tradition and meeting shamans and, and um, people all over the world to really build this map of what we call the synchronic lines, the energy lines of the planet. And then they came to this valley, which was really close to where they left, 40 minutes away, and when they arrived, there was this old man that came running to them, very angry, screaming at them, you're late, you're late, you're late! <laughs> and they were like really very surprised that we were late for what? And the man said, well, uh, that many, many years before, he had a dream, and in this dream, this was this female figure, very convincing, that said to him that he had to buy all of their land because one day somebody would come and buy it to create something completely new. And in his dream, he saw children, he saw art. It was so compelling mm. that he did that. Mm. But now he was old and he was tired. Mm. So he said, oh, you're late. <laughs> I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> so, they signed this, <laughs> so they signed the contract, they bought the land from him, and he died a week later. Wow. Wow. So it's a very interesting story. Mm. Uh, this is again a... He must have been born as one of the children since then. Excuse me? He must have been born as one of the children since then. Maybe we don't know. <laughs> it's possible that a part of him has come back to see mm -hmm. what happened. So this is the open temple, which is in the heart of this first part of the land that we bought. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of strange, the perspective, but it gives you an idea. <coughs> 
Okay, the, here you see from the top, and here you can have an idea. Uh, the columns there create a sort of a pathway, and this opens. So what we've built here architecturally is a chalice. Mm -hmm. Because this symbolically represents the place where we have the container of our arts. So this is used for, for the performing arts, it's used for weddings, and also with the full moon it's used for the rite of the oracle. So it's really the idea of a container. And so also the architecture had to define that. Here you see <laughs> nice, yeah, we have seasons and we get a lot of snow in the winter. It was very interesting. We've had um, many people coming to offer ceremonies um, and this was a global meditation day for peace that was um, synchronized all over the world and there were computers that were measuring, there was change in the random, randomness of the number sequences and so we had one of those and Irving Lazo was there with, it, with us and that's why we have planet Earth. This was dedicated to our planet. Mm -hmm. In Damro we've been building temples. This is the thing we probably do better than anything else. So we've been building temples and taking the rock out in buckets. So we've created a dance that is called the bucket dance. And that's what you're seeing there. This is our dancer, they have, they have buckets and they're created a dance that shows how we were passing the bucket hand, you know, from one person to the person, hand to hand, to take the rock out of the temples. We have counted three million buckets of rock today. <laughs> okay, this is a picture of the open temples during the rite of the oracle, which is always with the full moon. And it's always outdoors, even when it's raining, snowing, hailing, it's in there. This is the detail of the altar. We have a beautiful crystal there. Mm -hmm. We have many more standing stones because we really consider this part of our land as a piece of circuitry to connect to cosmic energies and the energies of the earth. So we are using uh, standing stones like many peoples of the past and these represent antennas. Sparrow that can be walked again to tap into the energies of the land. Here you can see this is part of where we of the circle where we celebrate the rituals of the solstice and the equinoxes and the commemoration of the dead, which are the most important rituals in which every Damanurian citizen participates, and they're open also to our friends and our guests. So over, if you are interested in coming in Dublin and participating in a ritual with all of us, those would be the times in which you come. And um, yeah, they're always again outdoors because the forces of nature are really the intermediary for us humans and the divine plane. So they're always outdoors. And this gives you an idea of one of the standing stones there. The houses in the center part are all painted, and we painted animals and flowers much larger <laughs> than us. Again, to change the perspective a little bit, so that we don't think that we are the masters of planet Earth, but we have to constantly think, how can we live in harmony? How can we be stewards and not destroyers of our beautiful planet? This is an interesting photograph. When we moved to this valley, it had been abandoned because everybody went to work for Fiat or Olivetti, the big companies. So most of the homes that we bought look like this. This is a photograph of one of the typical houses that we were buying in the valley and heavy to transport. As you can see, there is the flag of Damer on top of there, and then there is another flag. Because every home creates their own flag. So the people that live in, in any of our homes create a flag that has the sim symbols of what that particular family, community, wants to create together and on the land in which they are. And this gives you an idea, this house looked a little bit like that one when we bought it and then we really turned it into a beautiful, a beautiful garden and a beautiful sustainable um, community. This is a, you have a look at the house, this is one of our most advanced, lots of people really interested in experimenting live there. And that is a solar um, dish uh, to the right that was made by some people in Italy. They made it and then they gave it to us to ask us if we would experiment with it. Because often we have people having no, innovative ideas and they come and say, would you try it out for us? Mm -hmm. So that's really. 
This is a photograph from an Italian magazine that ran a, an article on all, all the different things they were doing in, in the field of ecological building and sustainable technologies. This is another one of our homes. And again, you see they're quite big because our families go from 12 to 20, 25 people in a family, in a community, but the houses are always built in a way that they're really beautiful with the landscape. And that's the family that lives in the house that we just saw. So this gives you an idea of what we mean by family. Right? Families are couples, single individuals, younger, older couples with children. And they're holding their flag, the flag of their own specific community. Mm -hmm. This is a straw bale house, one of first experiment. And this is interesting, it's a small um, wooden cabin, but this turns with the sun. Oh. And it uses uh, solar energy to turn. Huh? It's, not like, it's, not like good. it's like a sunflower. It's like a sunflower. This is an, one of our homes, again very large, it's a large family. You see solar palace, and again I like this picture because the stone gate there is to tap into the more subtle energies of the earth and then of course we have the technology of today to tap into the sun. Mm -hmm. Another one of our homes and another one of the families. This is where I live. It's a older, not so highly technological, but we have a very low impact house and we have many uh, stone circuitry that stone mazes and labyrinths that people can come and walk and this is one of the most popular meditations at Davenor, both for Davenorians and our friends also. Here you see again, because it's all. So here you can see people, and you can see we're really in, immersed in nature. These were experimental houses that we built um, during a period of um, really wanted to try and live in contact with nature and we took off in groups and we were in our forest to clear the forest that we just bought and also to really create stronger bonds with one another and to see well if we were somewhere where there's nothing how will we create a civilization and so we built some of these houses they're not used to live in but they're used very often by our school so this, what you're seeing is the school children. We have schools in Damara from 0 to 13. And the next one also shows this. So very often during the summer, they go up with their teachers and they spend a week or two completely immersed in nature and the kids love this way of learning. And because we like that experiment very much, we create a full village of people that constantly live up there, two meters high. It started with the idea, what would it be like to dream up high in the trees and now we have 50 people that live full time and the next uh, photograph shows that to you. So they can walk from one of the cabins to the next up there. This is the inside of one of the newest one. This is the third floor, very high, and this can be used by everyone that wants to go and sleep there to dream. Mm -hmm. So both Damanurians and people that come and visit, if they want to dream near the trees, they can rent this room. And this gives you an idea how you go down from that room. It's quite high and quite steep. <laughs> More sp spirals, again, that's all the, the sacred forest. This is a device that we have created in Damaro to make plants sing. But even more important is to make us become aware that plants do interact with us, that plants are not just decorations and so this machines turns the variation in electric conductivity of the trees of, of the leaves and the roots of a tree of a plant into a MIDI signal that is converted into music and what is really extraordinary is to see that when humans pay attention to this the plants really respond and uh, it varies according to the environment and according to the intention that we have if you're interested in this, which is really quite extraordinary, there's a lot of short videos on this on, a, on YouTube that you can find. My la latest concert was two weeks ago in New York City, and we actually it went really, really well. And it's also on YouTube, so you will see <laughs> little plants singing in New York City. 
This um, is a big concert of the trees. We offer them constantly in Damanhur. We have the trees singing, not just the small pot of plants. And the lady sitting there in black is Julia Butterfly Hill, mm. who's a dear friend of ours and, of course, very moved by this. And this is a concert of the plants in India. Now we get into another section that is, for us, it's very important also to be very committed where we live. And so we have been um, also engaging local politics. And now, for the last 13 years, so we've been administering a town, one of the villages where we are. So the mayor and the councillors are all, are all Damanorians, and there is a photograph of them. Um, that's them. So this for us has been very important. And it's the first time, from what we know, the history of our planet that members of a spiritual community actually run an official organ of a state. Mm -hmm. So this gives us hope. These are some of our volunteers. Volunteering is very important uh, for us. This is another view where we are from an helicopter. It's a Vrea, isn't it? No, no, this is Vidraco. This is our small village. Oh. Ivrea would be much larger. This is an ancient mill that we have, the, we, uh, as the town councillors, have restored and we've turned it into a museum of the ancient times. But from next summer, the, the stone mill will start working again wow. and we want to invite people to bring their grains and, weeds and start getting uh, this going again as one of the centers of the community, not just Damanhur, but the larger community there. Yeah, so this when we was in, inaugurated with all the different flags also of uh, the region Piedmont. Mm. Some of our kids, as I said, were school from zero to 13. And our kids, they have a t teachers and also they have a tutor. So they have somebody who's with them to really uh, help them with their growth and help them become as much free individuals as possible. And so the teachers teach specialized um, subjects, but then they always have a reference figure with whom they start traveling quite young. We want our kids to have more than just one adult or the parents as their reference <coughs> figure, although the parents are very important, so they would be. But we have more adults because the, in the families, all the adults feel responsible for the children, and then also in the school, we have this model again. So to having more adults that can be examples and caring and loving for the children. And this is one of our, the buildings of our schools, and you say it says, scuola comunità, school community. So for us, it's important that the children don't only learn all the notions that they have to learn because of the Italian state, but they learn to be citizens of planet Earth in the widest and most uh, profound way possible. And languages? Oh yeah, of course, yeah, they study, they study Italian and English, and also I think it is another language, they study theater, they do a lot of expressive activities, music, a lot of things. We have to teach them the Italian curriculum. It's not possible not to, otherwise if they want to go to high school later, they won't be able to. So they have to learn, and that has been actually quite a debate in the community, because um, we are, for instance, obliged to teach them to sit at a desk. Uh, in the first years, we were m much freer in the way we educated them. And then when they went to school, they had lots of problems. Um, in Italian, for this is banal, but it's quite something. In, in Italian, we have a courtesy form. You can't just say you. You say you to friends, but then there is a courtesy form. Because we're in community, we never told that to our kids. And so when they went out to high school, we met some that had very serious problems because they, the professor thought that they were really disrespectful. But it's just because they did not know how to use a courtesy form. So now, uh, in the last class in our internal school, they have to learn to use the courtesy form, which is kind of funny because they may, <laughs> but, but we have been obliged to teach them something that gives them the tools to also function well and make their choices in the outside world. We didn't want to have kids that when they go out, they penalize. We want them to have more tools, not less opportunities. So this is the boys, one of our Boy Scouts groups. <laughs> 
Oh, this is a uh, school. We also have a university, a ongoing university for adults. This is a photograph actually taken here in California of a past life seminar because we bring our teaching also out to the world and then we encourage people to come to Damar where we have really beautiful schools for spiritual healers, for, uh, we have a mystery school in Damar. So this is part of our outreach and offering whatever are the fruits of our research in Damar also to the world. We have our own currency, it's called the credito, credit, to remind us that that's what money is, it's really trust in one another, and this alternative currency has been really at the basis of our development. So we always encourage community to really look into this, you know, the mystery of money is one of the fundamental mysteries of our life, but there is much more that can be done than we think. And we've been for many years hoping and working on the idea of creating a complementary currencies that could be exchanged among communities. This is the Open Secret Bookstore in San Rafael. Mm -hmm. And symbolically, Rob was a very good friend of ours, supports us, so he says, I'm going to accept credits mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. Open Secret Bookstore. It's more symbolic that not many people go there with credits, mm -hmm. but if you have credits, you can go mm -hmm. and use them there. Agriculture for us is very important. This year we've gone through a major, major restructuring of all our um, agriculture to empower it because we feel that what with climate change and what's happening in the world, um, food sovereignty and sustainability are fundamental. So here, just some slides of some of our agriculture. We have a full cycle for wheat and bread and cake. So this is the final result, but we have seeds that have never been genetically modified. We were able to find the old seeds. We have a seed bank. And so we are very happy with this. Cheese and wine. We make our own wine. We felt that uh, we could not be completely a civilization if we didn't have wine. So if we go to the next one, <laughs> You see, very Italian, very Italian. They're very Italian. <laughs> of course, very Italian. But in all Western tradition, wine has always been the sacred. And right now, there's a lot of uh, knowledge and awareness about ayahuasca and many things that come from indigenous tradition. But our own Western tradition, this was the way to communicate with the gods. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we bring back that sacredness, when we're drinking wine, what we're really drinking is the alchemy of that year. How much it rained, how much sun there was, what was this, you know, because that's only there. So we're trying to bring back also this awareness. It's not wine to be, to get drunk, but it's wine to be in communion with the land that supports us. This is a very, it used to be an old Olivetti factory that we have bought, and if you continue, um, we, it's right there, you see where it is in mm -hmm. the village. This was a very avant-garde experiment in the 50s and 60s. It was a cooperative, mostly of women that were working for Olivetti. Uh, because the founder was enlightened, the founder of Olivetti said, if we take people away from the mountains, we're going to kill all these cultures. So he built that. When he died, the heir said, this doesn't pay well. They closed everything down. So of course, they killed the mountain communities. And so when we went back there, it was our desire to bring this back to life. So it was a big effort. We bought it, we worked on it for one year, and we reopened it as Damanu Crea, which means Damanu Creates. And in here, we now have all of our art workshops. We have a very um, avant-garde healing center. We have a conference center, organic um, restaurant and cafe, and and many other things that uh, we just make and you can just go through, through the slides so they see a little bit of what we have in here. Organics, restaurant, and conference hall where we have our healing center is there. These are two of our doctors that use Western medicine as well as acupuncture, as well as a typical uh, unique Damanurian healing techniques like this one based on Selfika. What you're seeing there 
is a special healing tool which works on acupuncture points without puncturing and works both on the physical body and also the energetic structure of, uh, of the body. We have a dentist, massage and spa. This is a photograph of a selfica. So selfica is a word that we have invented in Dhamma. And what it means, it means a discipline which makes it possible to use objects mostly made of metals as receiver and transmitter for specific intelligences and energies that are already part of the space-time continuum in which we live, but they could not be captured and used if we didn't build them. It's like saying, if we, before we invented the light bulb, electricity was already there, right? But we didn't have a system to use it and then turn it into the million things we can turn it into. So this is the same principle. So we believe that there are signals that are constantly coming through to the Earth, through the different planets of our system, through different cosmic directions that can be tapped in and used. In, and we say intelligent because after a certain level of complexity, these in energies interact with humans in a way that can be tracked and that evolves. And so if we build these structures, it is possible to use them. And Damero has been experimenting with this for over 40 years. This is a very large, as you can see, a complex selfic structure that we have at Damro. This is used for cellular rejuvenation and for very specific healing. Again, another photograph. This is a photograph of two very simple selfic structures, like the ones we have here on the table, so then you can also look at them, the physical one, taken with the Kirlian camera mm -hmm. that shows their aura. So this is showing that they're not just pieces of metal, but they actually do conduit something. There is something that energy that goes through them. Esper, are those pictures of someone's personal self that they've been wearing for a while, or are they new ones? No, these were new ones. These were new ones. So, so it seems like it would change, or would it, would it change after a while, after it, if it's been... Used yeah. by a person, what Enjoy changes the, the frequency we adjust to the person energy field yeah. and then becomes personal. And then the selfie bracelet will, will use a tiny bit of whatever is, how can I say this, oh, the products of, of our life energy to perform the function for which it has been built. Mm -hmm. So what are they made of and what? Like the these? simple ones are made of copper. The very complex ones is copper and gold and alchemical liquids and microcircuitry. And in order to create this connection between the, the body and the actual signal that is being transmitted, and uh, we have built a huge machine, which is called the Temples of Humankind, mm -hmm. which holds the field through which this is possible. Mm -hmm. We have um, art workshops all in the area. So this just you can go quickly through this thing and just to see bringing back ancient arts. Mm -hmm. And all of that has been because we started building temples. Thanks to the help of Wendy and her vision, we have created a beautiful uh, coffee table book mm -hmm. on the temples of humankind. So this is uh, what he wrote in the intro to the, to the book. And these are the temples. They're completely built inside the mountain. Now, what you're seeing here is as if we cut the mountain, okay? But they're all inside the rock. And it's been quite an endeavor. <laughs> It started in 1978 and it has not finished yet. We have big dreams for the future. These are quite rare historical photographs. The temples were built in secret 
because we could not get a building permit for temples underground. They were just not foreseen by any kind of legislation. <laughs> and so they were not documented. We don't have much of the years, of the first years. So these are really quite rare photos. And uh, the buckets. So we were, you see, everybody was engaged in building, women, men. And this is interesting because you're seeing the buckets that were being emptied from the top of the mountain being brought down and again to be used again and then on tracks to be taken out. And it's, very, it's a very interesting story. Sometimes to cover the, the sound of the hammers they were building the the mountains, they would have music very loud, so the people in the village were thinking that the Damaruras were throwing wild parties all the time. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> there are so many very fun stories of how the temples were built. This is a little more recent. But still, it gives, so can you go back to what I said? It really gives you an idea. You know, this is like inside a mountain and conquering the mountain centimeters by centimeter. We never used any explosives. It's always all been by hand, done by hand. Mm. Wow. Because for us, this was the sacredness of the earth that we were entering. So we do it through our work, our dedication, and it corresponds to going really deep inside ourselves. Is this in the goddess mind? Mm hmm? Is it in that goddess mountain? In the what? The mountain Sleeping that you showed Beauty. at the beginning. No, no, okay. no, it's, it's uh, nearby. Okay. Now the Sleeping Beauty. And here we go fast, so then we have time for questions, but this will take a little bit into the temples. This is the Hall of Mirrors, and dedicated to air and spirituality. This is the, lar the center of the dome, which is the largest in Tiffany glass in the, in the world. And the, the decoration that you see is not just science, artistic science, but it's based on an ancient language that we use at Damaner that we call sacred language because it's used for the temples. And so each one of those signs is actually saying something. It is an artistic photograph where you can see the dome four times. This is the whole of uh, water dedicated to the feminine principle. The Hall of Spheres, the Labyrinth. There are several pictures of this hall. It's quite large. It's very strange. So it's not so narrow. You have to imagine a little less narrow and a little wider. And this hall is being um, built. We continue building. This hall is dedicated to the history of humanity from the point of view of the different divine forces that were connected to peoples throughout history. So in the windows, there are... It's the next one. So no, 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 if you stay here, you can see the window there represents a god. And also, we have more paintings represented divine forces on the wall. So this is really a journey through the history and the memory of humankind through the divinities as as containers of the highest ideals of humanity. And these are painters, they still work like Michelangelo up there on scaffolds. <laughs> and it's all been approved. Oh, now yes, now yes. But sometimes it takes a 10 years to get permission, so it's lower than it was when it wasn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. This gives you an, an idea again of um, the work, the buckets, and this is the whole of mirrors that, I'm uh, sorry, the whole of metals that we'll see what it looks like now. Still working there, and this is what it is now. Wow. This is a very beautiful room dedicated to the different phases of our life, the journey through our different ages and our own alchemical transformation from iron into gold. Mm. Those trees? The columns, uh, look like trees to remind us that in ancient times the first temples were the forest. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the um, little statues on the ground? Yes, thank you. Each one of us, we make our own statuette. So that symbolically, we're always present inside the temple. So what you're seeing are statuettes of every Damanurian. And then we have many hundreds more 
in the gardens, outside, everywhere, because this meditation is really beautiful. And we have many guests or friends that want to do it. Sometimes they live very far, they can take the statue with that with them so they leave that in our garden. So when you walk the sparrows in them or you walk around the grass, there are all these little beings looking at you everywhere. <laughs> avatars. Little avatars, yes. <laughs> this is the whole of the earth and this is 30 meters below ground, so really, really deep, dedicated to our planet. This is the upper chamber and is dedicated to the male principle of the earth, Pan, the male Active, right? And the lower chamber that we see in the next slide, oh, this is still up. Sorry, still the upper chamber. Oh, this is a beautiful photo with the columns, yes. Dedicated to the sun and the male principle, masculine principle, and to the moon, the feminine principle. Doors. This is the lower chamber and this is dedicated to life on our planet, so to the earth like Gaia. So we have the two principles together present. This is the book on the temples, another shot of the hole of the of water. And this is a big hole. <laughs> and this might not say much to you yet, <laughs> but this is a big hole already in existence. This used to be a quarry. You see here, these are the circus that you saw before. My house is here, so it's right in front of it. And here we have a big dream. We want to build a temple dedicated to all the peoples of humanity, to be the container of indigenous knowledge and a point of meeting of that ancient knowledge of those who have been the holders and the keepers of the earth with the knowledge from our future. That we believe that many of us in these times, we have knowledge of a possible direction of the future. And that is in the meeting of the wisdom of the past and that feeling of where it is the new direction that we can really find the answers for humanity. So this is a very important hole in the ground for us. It took us 10 years to get the bureaucratic permits and we have now them, now we don't have the money. So we'll see if the universe will manifest it or not. In the meantime, we've already been receiving shamans from many parts of the world. Some we have invited, and some are starting to come because in dreams they've seen our temples. And so they come mm -hmm. recently, two months ago, we had a, a young uh, Mexican shaman that was sent by his elders to bring something from their culture to ours because the elders dreamed of the temples of Dam. Mm -hmm. And they said, you need to bring this there. So the connection is starting to happen, and we hope that with this in place, this will also become a reality. At the moment, we are welcoming, welcoming them in the temples that we already have built. But we, will re we feel that it's important to create a special place for this. So I think this was my last slide. So now you have an idea of where we are, what we're doing, and uh, I'm happy to answer questions. If there are questions for me, if there are questions for Qualia or Wendy, we're all here and we can all so um, these temples, the, I'm, I'm curious like how, how much excavation and like I'm assuming there were like big caves in there. And there were no caves, this was solid rock. Oh my goodness. The so temples. You, you excavated all that. Yeah, we excavated it all. We excavated it all. Three yes. million buckets. Yeah. Millions of buckets of rock. This was completely. No, that's why I said that's a big hole. That's good news. It's already a hole. It's already excavated. <laughs> that would be a big change in what we've been doing so far. No, that was just a mountain. Completely a mountain. And what was the origination of that particular idea? Like yeah, the idea of the temples, or? as well as that of Damanur, um, were originated by a man who's still living in the community that we consider our, um, you know, the inspiration and the visionary for this dream. His name is Alberto Airaudi. We call him Falcon because in Damanur we all have animal names. So my name means uh, Sunset Butterfly, and her name is Quail. And so he had this vision when he was a child. And then he is 
great ability has been that of being able to find other people that could share his dream. And their dreams together have created the temples and Dharma. And we still, and this is a dream that is still unfolding. Mm. And um, we are now in a phase in which we are really also welcoming new people. We're so, this is a phase in which we're saying to people, you feel cold. There will be an opportunity to come and become a citizen of Damaro in a fast way because Damaro has been going through different periods. Like it's like breathing. Sometimes you breathe in and you breathe out. So sometimes the community have been more like, um, you know, growing on the inside, and some other times it's been more like, come and join us. This is a time of come and join us. So I hope that. Among those who see this, there will be someone that feels called to come. And you can come in the beginning even just for three months. We have a beautiful program where people can come and live with us for three months, and being exposed to every single aspect of our life, the philosophy, the ritual aspects, the working together, the living together. And then after these three months, they can leave and continue with their life and hopefully bring some of these values with them. Or if they want to stay, they already know how life is in Damaru, so it's easier. I was this, um, I had lunch today at the Pachamama Alliance here in San Francisco, and I've been very moved by it. I've known them for many years. Many of them have come to Damaru. We've been friends for a long time. And uh, Lynn Twin said something which really touched me. She said, we, you know, always thinking of our children, and we're always thinking that it's very important for us to make sacrifices and invest a lot in the education so that they can have a, the best possible life in this world. But we're now at a time in which we're not even sure there will be a world for them. Mm. So I think that everything that unites education so is really something that is going to make our life here sustainable and therefore possible. It's really fundamental. So for this, I am in my life very grateful for Damaro. They gave me the opportunity of feeling that what I'm doing is valuable and meaningful in that direction. So what you're doing here too is, so that's why I'm sharing this with you, because I'm sure it resonates with what you're doing here at CIS. Well, I thank you, Jorge, for inviting me. <laughs> so, especially since you talked about lenders, I'm very curious about your use of credit um, and how do you use it to bring out the spiritual significance of money in the community? Yeah. Yes, the, the credit was really invented to bring out the spiritual significance of money. So it was a result of a deep meditation of, of the first years of the community. We know that when we're using the credit of this money has never been used for anything but the growth of our community. So it's never been used to buy anything that has to do with weapons or, you know, nothing. So that already gives it a certain, um, it gives it a purity that you don't find in, in the other money. Even if it, there is a lot of beautiful things being done with money now, Still, the system has definitely been not used so well so often. So our coins also are prepared in the temples. There is a special moment in which they are presented um, so that hopefully when they get in touch with any other kind of money, they would also have energetically and spiritually and symbolically this function of clearing the field. And this is the magical aspect. And then the practical aspect is that when you have a local currency that is only accepted locally, then you have to use it locally. And that has been the huge, um, a huge drive for us to start creating something to buy. If you have money and you don't have anything to buy or, or, or services that you cannot exchange, then it's useless. So when the, when the creditor was found created in Damano, because it was a shared choice, people accepted not to use, at the time was the lira, but only the creditor. And because the creditor was only accepted in Davenor, they really also accepted to sort of support and fund one another in creating activities and companies. <coughs> and that's what gave the impulse to our first uh, artisanal workshops and the art workshops and the first things that could be exchanged. Then the system became more complicated and more complex and the laws also changed. And so 
we had to make the creditor equal to the euro so that for tax purposes it is legal because it, having the same values when we record it you see the same value and taxes are paid. But now we're having another big discussion in the community. We're saying, well, in this way, the creditor is, is totally convertible. But then that idea of using it as our own currency is being a bit lost. So we're going, to, we are discussing now how to take part of it and make it non-convertible again while still being legal. And it's a big discussion, but it's a very important philosophical point also and spiritual point to be able to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sorry, I, can. I was interested in the ancient language, mm -hmm. uh, like where it came from, I had, does it have Celtic roots, does it have like um, Roman roots, you know, that team was, uh, what, and how you found the ancient language. Okay. The ancient language and the basic of Selfica were part of the memories of the da of Damanor's founder, of Falco. So this was part of what he contributed to the community. Um, and then both the Selfica and the Selfic language, may, people started to work with, with the first ideograms. With the, when he transmitted this language, he did it through, through poems. It was not something they said, I'm going to teach you, and this is this. He gave the Damanurians a poem in this language without a translation. And he said, now,